Today on V-Twin TV, find out how a stolen Harley led to the creation of the six-speed transmission. Check out the crazy chopper scene in the 70s. And custom builder Eddie Trotta starts work on a fabulous custom chopper, which we're going to give away to a lucky viewer. Stick around to find out how you can enter the giveaway for a chance to win this bike. V-Twin TV is brought to you by GEICO Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. Hi, I'm Dave Nichols, editor of V-Twin Magazine. Wouldn't it be great to make a living doing what you love? Most people who've discovered the magic of motorcycles would love to leave their day jobs, follow their hearts, and spend their lives surrounded by bikes. And that's what our show is about. Every week, we'll focus on those cool people who have turned their passion for motorcycles into their livelihood. Over the upcoming weeks, we'll meet a three-generation family who gets their kicks on the motorcycle rodeo circuit. A gypsy biker who spends his life on the road. A little god, he's good. Makes you stand out in the crowd. A man who had his prayers answered with the inspiration to build caskets for bikers. An old school custom builder who gets by without punching a time clock. And the man who started a custom paint revolution in his garage. We begin with the story of a guy, kind of a crazy guy, whose stolen Harley led him down the road to create one of the most successful businesses in the whole motorcycle aftermarket. What's the best part of your job? Best part of my job is I haven't had a real job in seven years. The last, I've been unemployed, okay? I've been unemployed for seven years. When I quit General Motors in 1998, that was the last time I had a job. This is where Burt Baker is unemployed. It's a business called Baker Drivetrain. And yes, it's named after him and his wife, Lisa. My wife and I were engineers at General Motors for 14 years. And we went to Michigan State University right in town here. She graduated with honors. I barely graduated. 40 plus people and growing. We got new stuff coming every day. They come up with, hey, look what we're doing now. Hard to believe it started in somebody's basement. One could say that Baker Drivetrain started out of my bike getting stolen at Bike Week in uh, 1994. Actually, it was 95, and we were dating, and you did one of those tricks you like to do. You called me up uh -huh. after it got stolen, and you mm -hmm. said, you know, baby, every now and then something happened that changes your life. And I'm like, oh, God, he's going to marry a stripper instead of me. <laughs> What we got going on here is a brand new product we're developing. It's a three inch transmission. That dimension refers specifically to the size of the gears inside the transmission. The three inch transmission will be good to 250 foot pounds of torque. It'll be a monster. This is where my first motorcycle got stolen. I haven't been here in 10 years, so this is uh, it's kind of creepy. But if your bike hadn't been stolen, I you would have just kept riding around with your buddy. Getting drunk. Um, getting riding drunk, around. <laughs> riding around. Your bike was actually very appealing yes. to all people, and especially women, by the way. Um, yeah, so that's why when he says that, oh, my bike got stolen, it's terrible, I'm like, oh, that's not so bad. <laughs> right. So me. you did it. You yeah. set up the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Scheming woman. Luckily, Bert's bike was insured. Instead of using the money to buy a new bike, he built a new one. But in fifth gear, the bike shook so badly that it just wasn't drivable. It gave me the idea, well, what if there was a sixth gear? So from that point, I started designing one. The reason Burt's what if was such a breakthrough was that up until that point, all Harleys were either four or five speeds. I remember specifically the first time I shifted from fifth to sixth gear on the road. First off, I was waiting for a loud explosion or something catastrophic to happen, quite honestly, but it didn't happen. And uh, that RPM reduction was just the sweetest thing 
took all vibration out of the handlebars, off the seat, off the floorboards. It was definitely an aha moment. Aha, I got something the whole world wants. We took our 401k savings account. We took our kids' college savings. We borrowed money from relatives. We did it all. We got money we from... We didn't borrow any money from relatives. My parents. They gave or us money. Took money from them. They gave us money. Okay, anyway, fine. We got, a lot, we got a lot of I damn money. I forgot about that. I did forget about that. We, we got a lot of damn money, and uh, we decided to roll the dice. Lisa and Bert rolled the dice by leaving the security of their jobs at General Motors and making a production run of 50 transmissions in the basement of their house. They started selling immediately. I mean, he, the way I understand it, mortgage his house, everything, put everything into it, the idea that he had. Was it risky? Hell yeah. Was it stupid? Yeah, it was really stupid. Well, it would have been stupid if Bert and Lisa's gamble had failed, but it didn't. I'm kind of the creative side, and she's kind of the reality side. You know, maybe it's a little cliche, but it's a good yin and yang, you know, relationship. In fact, Lisa's the president of the company, and the employees recognize her as the boss as much as they do Bert. She's the calm one of the bunch. She's the one that holds, you know, we, may, we have a lot of pieces in this building. She's the one that keeps them all together. We have a chrome plater that, one chrome plater that's doing most of the chrome plating now. And um, they want to raise prices again, so. They want to raise prices again. Mm -hmm. You told them to go to hell? Come visit. Ah. Nicer than you. Baker Drive Train would not exist today without me or without Lisa. We as a team are absolutely necessary for running Baker Drive Train. This is the big dog system. As you can see, it's just a gleaming chrome piece of Tiffany jewelry. You can tell I'm kind of proud. We ship uh, 22 to 25 of these a day to Wichita, Kansas. You could come in one day thinking you're gonna do something and then you end up doing something completely different. That thing will need to go on the mill to get the hex put on it. What's on the screen right now? Did you save that? Oh yeah, I already got that. Why, why the hell is it on the screen? Usually we got about five projects going all at once. Is that head gasket blown? How do you know it? Problem solving starts with having a full understanding of the whole system. Shooting from the hip never works. That's cool. Are you excited? Oh yeah, dude. It's nap time for me. I would really like to take a nap. Join us after Bert's nap to find out what he'll do when he gets his hands on those bike thieves. Today's feature segment is sponsored by Star Motorcycles. We build it, you make it your own. Oh, here's Bert busy at work. You know, we're, uh, we're on a roll here. This is Bert. We're on, I, I like the Bert. Ah. This motorcycle industry is one big man's garage. Manliness, beer bellies, disregard for women. My wife calls the motorcycle aftermarket one of the last industries to evolve. As part of his unevolved nature, Bert spent a lot of time in strip clubs with other cycle enthusiasts. She said, if we were to make the deal that you never step foot into a strip club again, would getting sleeves be an adequate trade? I said, hell yeah. I've stuck to my word. I've never stepped foot in a strip club since. Guess what? Lisa loves my sleeves. You talk to him for a period of time, and you realize that his brain is just all about this it's not just like his nine to five. I mean, his world is inside that box, and any of his guys will tell you the same thing. Bert's a genius, there's no doubt about it. He is Baker Drive Train as far as what goes where and why. So the, the inside is virtually net forged too. Yeah, pretty close. I think we're looking good. I'm happy with this model. Let's spend $18,000. Let's make a die. Awesome. And with that, 
um, comes all the challenges of being able to manage that type of a uh, personality style. 9 a.m. every day, uh, the daily production meeting takes place. Once a month, I'll come up here to hassle people. They kick me out, and then they get their job done. You know, his attention span for just the methodical day-to-day -day work, it's really not there. He wants to be applying himself to the engineering or the design of transmissions. I'm certainly not a guru, but I, uh, I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. If just once we could actually look at the way we run our corporate world and inject the enthusiasm that comes from the individual entrepreneur, the guy like Bert. This is exciting. When a cute little pallet like this arrives, it's the thrill of the expectation of what it's going to be. That is some manly stuff. Isn't that cool? I had no tattoos when I started here. That's a big drive train does to you. If we could maybe not mold people, but allow them to uh, work in an atmosphere that they can actually create and feel free of fear of being able to say really what they're thinking or how they feel. He's telling you, get the out of here. <laughs> Please, get the out of my office. And he slams the door in your face. I'm a nice guy. I, I try to be a nice guy. It could be just me being naive, thinking that, boy, what a difference that would make. But I really think that's the truth of it. There is hope for today's youth. <laughs> Kyle's proof of it. If I were to meet them today, I'd shake their hands for stealing my motorcycle because it was that event that really uh, gave birth the Baker drivetrain. I didn't know it at the time. It was traumatic at the time, but uh, it was that event that gave birth the Baker drivetrain. So your kids are still going to get to go to college? Our kids' college savings plans are paid back and they're ready to go. <laughs> Today's feature segment has been sponsored by Star Motorcycles. We build it, you make it your own. Coming up from the V-Twin Vault, a blast from the past, 70s choppers. And we'll tell you how to enter the giveaway for a chance to win this custom bike. The bike culture wasn't born yesterday. The V-Twin Vault is full of decades of rarely seen film and video footage. It's sponsored by GEICO Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. Market. Hi, I'm Steve Teachow. Welcome to the V-Twin Vault. If you think choppers are popular now, check out this footage from almost 30 years ago. The chopper scene started in the 60s, but the 70s was the era of the full-blown chopper explosion. In the 70s, everybody that was a biker was a true biker. They, well, they worked on their own bike, they changed their own oil, they you know, had some mechanical ability. The builders were building out of their garage. It wasn't always about the big buck money thing where you had to have these razzle-dazzle wheels or 187-inch cubic inch badass motor. Back then, there was literally a chopper. You took a street bike and you chopped as much of it as you could off. That's where the bob fenders come from. A four and a half foot or a five foot springer front end, an old girder and on a stock frame without a rake to it, looks like you run it into a brick wall. A lot of Z bars, extended tubes. There was always something going on in the front end. The 17 inch spool, front wheel, a little narrow tire. A king queen seat. All the out of control, you know, like psychedelic paint job. They were totally unsafe. Brakes on the rear, maybe. <laughs> that was about the extent of brakes. Most of them didn't have a front brake. Unless you don't need that gaudy rotor and caliper, you know, I mean, what's with that? Other than if you're going fast, it's nice to stop. <laughs> Join us next time for another visit to the V-Twin Vault. Brought to you by Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. 
Coming up, Eddie Trotta is building a chopper, and we're giving it away. Today's Bike Builder segment is sponsored by Dennis Kirk. When you want it, now. The first time I saw a chopper, I must have been probably maybe three or four years old, riding in the back of my father's station wagon, and it pulled up next to him in a red light, and cracked the throttle, and scared me to death. I liked it. I used to own a surf shop when I was 20 years old. And one day I was sitting outside just hanging and some dude pulled up on a chopper all chopped out with some hot chick on the back. And I was like, dude, that is so cool. New Haven, Connecticut, bunch of maniacs driving down the road, big ape hangers, front ends jacked way on up with a 21 inch wheel. This is cool. Over the next few episodes of V-Twin TV, we're going to follow master bike builder Eddie Trotta as he and his crew design and build a $70,000 chopper from the ground up. But. You might as well just fire me, bitch, because I've been rocking on this thing all day. I think we're in there like swimwear, dude. <laughs> and when it's done, we're going to give it away to one of our viewers. That's whacked. Find out how to enter the giveaway for a chance to win the bike at the end of the show. Eddie Trotta travels to bike events around the country, showing off his incomparable choppers. When I look at a bike, I want to see long, swooping, clean lines. Some bikes we do real simple. Some bikes, they get pretty complicated. And they don't even look complicated. They look, the simpler the bike looks, sometimes it's the harder to build. 